Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Chris Robinera, licensed marriage and family therapist and behavioral health specialist here at Sure Health. Our focus is on your health. And I'm not just talking about stethoscopes and physicals. At Sure, we define health as physical, emotional, and social health. All three of these come together to form a true meaning of better health. Right now, during the COVID-19 or coronavirus pandemic, there is no doubt that people are having feelings of stress and anxiety. Many people are feeling stressed right now, and you are not alone. Patients, family, friends, and coworkers are all experiencing many different emotions. To be honest, I'm feeling a wide range right now, such as fear, surprise, anger, sadness, and joy. As I've talked to people, I have found that there are several common worries that we all have. The first and quite obvious worry is actually catching the coronavirus. And the second one being, if you do come down with it, what if we pass it on to our loved ones, such as our children or aging parents? For parents, you worry about your children, no matter the age. School buildings are closed until the fall. Parents are worried about the lack of face-to-face -face instruction. Of course, there is the worry about childcare. Who will take care of my child if I have to go to work? And then there are the worries of parents with high school seniors. Feelings of sadness, grief, and frustration because they are missing out on many memorable moments such as prom and graduation. People are also extremely stressed about work and finances. Many have had their hours cut, been laid off, furloughed, told to take time off, or even lost their job. Without being able to work and no money coming in, there is intense pressure to pay bills, keep a roof over their head, and have food on the table. And then there is the worry about the unknown. What is the lasting effect of the coronavirus? Will we ever return back to normal? These are all valid concerns and worries to have. Many people feel similar to the way you do. You are not alone. We don't know how long this pandemic will last. It's hard to predict the outcomes, but we can and need to focus on the here and now. We need to take this moment by moment. We don't know what this will look like tomorrow or in a week and let alone in a month, but we can focus on being present in the moment right now. What feels manageable to you in this exact moment? Focus on what you can do. Take it one day at a time, one hour at a time, and one step at a time. The best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. Speaking of focus, another tip that I have for you is to limit your media as well as your social media to a maximum of one hour per day, preferably in the morning. Too close to bedtime, and people just think it over and over and over throughout the night, and it prevents them from getting a good night's sleep. Everything you see and hear on the news or on Facebook is coronavirus this, COVID-19 that, the latest number of cases and deaths in the country. It's in your face all the time. You can get all of this information within a single hour. Limit your exposure to all types of media. Instead, look for the good in the world. There are many people who are putting themselves at risk every day, like those in healthcare or other essential workers. There are many good deeds that are taking place every single day. Neighbors are looking out for each other. Communities are coming together and people are slowing down and realizing all that they have in their lives. There is still so much good in the world. You can also look for the humor in each day. We need something to counterbalance this heaviness. You can find some good, clean dad jokes, pug videos on the YouTubes, or even listen to some stand-up comedy. Laughing is good for the soul and an amazing stress reliever. Let me hit you with a joke right now. What did the farmer say when he lost his tractor? Hey, where's my tractor? <laughs>
Ah. As we look for the good, I also want you to find gratitude. What are we grateful for? I know this could be tough with so much doom and gloom right now, but the world is such an amazing place. Here's what I want you to do. When your alarm goes off and you put your feet on the ground, even before you get out of bed, think deeply about three things that you are grateful for. You know what? I'll start us off. One, I'm grateful for the opportunity to help people. Two, I'm grateful for the people and the community that supports me. And three, I'm grateful for the roof over my head because I know that not everyone is lucky to have that. Start your day with gratitude. We need ways to de-stress. That's why I want you to develop a self-care toolkit. What I mean by this is, how do you recharge your battery? How do you relax? What fills you with joy? And what brings you happiness? This looks different for everybody. For children, this could be a soft blankie, a stuffed animal, reading, or even karate. For adults, this could be cranking up the music, exercising and hitting the weights, dancing, cleaning, maybe even dancing while cleaning, watching a movie, cooking, or binge watching all seven episodes of Tiger King on Netflix. I could go on and on, and you probably could too. Personally, when I'm feeling stressed and worried, if I have five minutes, I write everything and anything that's on my mind at that moment. I just write and write until my time is up. If I have an hour, I'm going to hit some weights. I'm looking to get buff and chase that pump. After all, I do suffer from what they call swoliosis. As you can tell, your self-care toolkit should be very personalized, so be sure to make it your own. With the orders, regulations, and guidelines changing day by day during this shutdown, our daily routine gets ruined. Raise your hand if yesterday you stayed in your pajamas all day. Don't be ashamed. The government is basically telling you to do exactly that. But here are my recommendations. Whether you believe Carol Baskin or not, have a daily routine. Have a regular wake up time. Take a shower, brush your teeth, dress like you are going somewhere. Get outside and take in some fresh air. At a distance, of course. Be sure to schedule that exercise. Also, go to sleep at a regular time. Develop that relaxing nighttime routine to promote good sleep hygiene. If you have children, they need a routine too. Have them get up like they would for school, eat breakfast, get dressed, do their schoolwork, schedule some recess time, lunch, reading, and things like that Monday through Friday. Develop that daily routine. And finally, I want you to stay connected with family and friends. I'm not talking about just liking their recent posts. I'm talking about starting a conversation. Have a video chat with that friend you haven't talked to in a while. I'm talking about an actual phone call with some real time back and forth interaction. You know who would love to talk to you right now? Your mother. Pick up the phone and give her a call. Use the technology that we have today and stay connected. Did you know that this thing could even make phone calls? You'll never know whose day you'll brighten when you reach out to them. Now is the time to connect with the people in your household. You can cook together, have a family game night, play together, or even work out together. Spend time deepening your relationship with the people who are important to you. If you've made it this far in the video, I know we covered a lot, but I want you to take these tips and tricks and make them your new normal. Focus on living in the present moment. Limit your time watching the news and being on social media. Look for the good in the world and go watch a few dog and cat videos. Find that gratitude. Develop your self-care toolkit and use it when you need to. Build that daily routine. And be sure to stay connected with family and friends. The new normal is what you make.